Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, you will have to excuse the background, the setup, the sound and all of it because I'm still traveling. Nevertheless, today I have a very, very special video for you guys because we're going to debunk the claim that the Quran doesn't get the Trinity. But Muhammad evidently thought that Christians believed in a Trinity composed of God, Mary and their offspring, Jesus. It's no wonder that he was revolted by such a ridiculous doctrine. Yes, as ridiculous as this sounds, there are truly some Christians that believe this stuff because there's some evangelicals that push it on social media, of course. Their claim is that the Quran simply doesn't understand what the Trinity is. Don't you understand? The Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. However, the Quran speaks about Mother Mary. Can't you see? So in Surah Al-Ma'idah we read, And beware the day when Allah will say, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you say to the people, take me and my mother as deities besides Allah? He will say, exalted are you. It was not for me to say that to which I have no right. So clearly, this is the proof that the Quran has no idea about the Trinity, even though the Quran does mention the Trinity here at all. The only thing that the Quran is mentioning here is that people, the Christians, took other partners besides Allah. Indeed, they took Jesus and his mother as deities besides Allah. So now the burden of proof is not on the Muslims, because the Muslims in the Quran do not claim that the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and Mother Mary. No, the Quran simply claims that the Christians deified Jesus and Mother Mary. And to prove this, we're going to go into the Christian sources, we're going to look into the Orthodox Christian Church, and we're going to see what they recite. Within the Orthodox Christian Church, you have something called the Holy Liturgy, and it is similar to the recitation of the Quran. Of course, not identical because we believe that the Quran is the holy revelation, the word of God. The quote-unquote holy liturgy, on the other hand, in the Christian Orthodox Church would be some sort of inspired text. Nevertheless, it is a liturgical service and the Orthodox Christian priests and monks recite that on every single day of the week. So as you just heard, the liturgical service is usually held in Greek, in Russian, in Old Church, Slavonic and whatnot, depending on the church. However, of course, we're going to read an English translation. All merciful virgin Theotokos. So for people that don't understand what Theotokos means, Theotokos literally means the mother of God. And now we read, all merciful, virgin mother of God. Does that sound familiar? All merciful? Yes, the most merciful. We pray, of course, as Muslims, to the most merciful, to God himself. But here, the all merciful virgin, the mother of God, is prayed to. The Orthodox Christians or Christians in general, Catholics, will tell you this is just veneration. But you are playing dangerous word games because this is clearly worship of the mother of God. If you have a God, naturally the mother of God becomes higher than God. Okay, again, all merciful virgin Theotokos. Audo billah. Mother of compassions and love for mankind, my most beloved hope and aspiration. 
And this is exactly what shocked me so much when I went to Mount Athos, because I went on a pilgrimage to Mount Athos in the pursuit of finding God. However, when I talked to the monks and priests over there, it wasn't about God. It was about Jesus here and there, and mainly it was about the Theotokos, the mother of God. And here you can see it, my most beloved hope and aspiration. So now tell me again that you're just venerating. This is absolutely ridiculous, of course, because the most beloved should be, of course, God. Even the Bible states, Jesus replied, so it's Jesus talking apparently, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is extremely powerful, of course, because he speaks about the heart, an emotional connection, the soul, a spiritual connection, and with your mind. So your mind shouldn't be occupied with anybody else but the Lord your God. However, the Orthodox Christians, of course, claiming here that they are the Orthodox Christians, exactly the right way, the way that it's supposed to be, they themselves say, my most beloved hope and aspiration. So here you can clearly see that they have more love for the Mother Mary than they have for God. It continues, O Mother of the most sweet and most desired Savior, who exceedeth every love, Jesus Christ, the lover of mankind, and my God, the light of my darkened soul. I, the exceeding sinful and hopeless one, fall down before thee. To thee I make my prayer. To Mary. O oh, well, spring of compassion, Virgin Mary, who didst bear the abyss of compassion and depth of mercies and love for mankind, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, I painfully cry to thee. And here you can clearly see how they are twisting scripture and how they are reinventing some prayers. In Luke 18, 13, we read in the Bible yet again, But the tax collector standing far off would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but kept striking his chest and saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. So yet again, we're not worshiping, right? It's just veneration. They're taking the text from the Bible where the text collector is praying to God, saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And now they're saying the exact same thing. Have mercy on me. But who is supposed to have mercy? In this case, it is the mother Mary. Have mercy on me, who am all in wounds, who have fallen among brutish thieves, and who am, alas, stripped naked of the garment in which the Father clothed me. Wherefore I lie stripped of every good deed, my wounds striking and festering before my madness. Madness it is indeed. My mistress, Theotokos, look down on me. I humbly pray thee with thy merciful eyes and despise me not, who am all in darkness, all in filth, all immersed in the mire of passions, terribly fallen and unable to stand. Do thou take pity on me and grant me a helping hand. Lift me up out of sinful depths, O oh my joy. Deliver me from them that surround me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. So the Bible clearly states as well that you cannot have two masters, right? You can only serve God or the devil. However, here he proclaims himself to be thy servant, the servant of Mary, not the servant of God. This goes beyond any type of veneration, any type of giving praise. No, this is clear worship. Save the perishing, cleanse the filthy, raise up the terrible fallen, for thou canst do all things, as thou art the mother of God Almighty. Audhu Bilam, and they're twisting scripture, their own scripture. Here you can find in the Bible, yet again, God can do all things. Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus looked at them and said, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Luke 1, 37. For nothing will be impossible with God. Mark 10, 27. Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Etc. Etc. You name it. But here you can see it again for the thousandth time, the twisting of Scripture. It's absolutely insane because they claim, For though you can do all things. 
as thou art the mother of God Almighty. Arrest my case, man. This is exactly what I said in the beginning. If you are the mother of God, obviously you have more power than God. And this is what they attribute to her. They say that Mother Mary can do all things. Yet again, proving the Quran. Pour forth on me the oil of thy compassion and grant me to overflow the wine of compunction. For I have acquired thee as truly the only hope in my life. I know, guys, it's very repetitive, but we have to hammer this home. It is the Christian sources that worship Mother Mary. Here she is, the only hope in the sinner's quote-unquote life. Yet again, not God. No, it is Mother Mary. Turn thou not away from me who flee to thee, but behold my grief, O virgin and the longing of my soul, and accept this prayer, and save me, O thou, the mediatress of my salvation. Amen. So this is absolutely satanic and so extremely twisted, because even if you believe the Orthodox Christian claim or the Christian claim in general, salvation is through Jesus Christ. We as Muslims don't believe that. Salvation is through God alone. That's it. However, the claim is, of course, that it's through Jesus. But here you see that he is longing of my soul and accept this prayer and save me, O thou, the mediatress of my salvation. So here it is clearly seen that Mother Mary is supposed to save the Christian. And of course, we read about this phenomena in the Quran as well. And those you call upon besides him, God, are unable to help you nor can they help themselves. But let's proceed. As you can see, it's a lot of text and I really want to prove it once and for all that Christians worship Mother Mary. Point blank. Monday. From polluted lips accept though a prayer, O unblemished, pure and most pure virgin, Theotokos, mother of God, and despise not my words. So yet again, clearly praying to Mother Mary, addressing her not only as a partner besides God, but as the mother of God. O oh my joy, but look down on me and have pity. O oh mother of my maker, during my lifetime do thou not abandon me, for thou knowest, O oh mistress, that I place all my hope on thee, and all mine aspiring is after thee. Wherefore, at the time also of my death, stand thou before me, O my helper, and be not then ashamed of me. For I know, O virgin, that I am guilty of many sins, and I, the wretched one, tremble, contemplating that hour. But though my joy reveal unto me, then thy presence Work thy mercy marvelously upon me, O mediatress of my salvation. Rescue me, O mistress, from the cruelty of the demons and from the fearsome and terrible trial of the spirits of the air and deliver me from their malice and transform all that grief and sorrow into joy by thine enlightenment and grant me to pass unharmed through the principalities and powers of darkness and to attain to worship at the throne of glory before Christ, our God, who sitteth there with his beginningless Father and all Holy Spirit. Amen. I was still caught the curve in the end there, right? After worshiping Mother Mary blatantly, in the end then he repeats the Trinity and then it's all good because all of this is God. Yeah, sure. But most problematic is that they are twisting scripture yet again because they're writing, grant me to pass unharmed through the principalities and powers of darkness. If you've ever read the Bible, you know exactly where this stems from. Ephesians 6, the full armor of God. Pretty cool title, actually. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. So here we can clearly read in the Bible that you should rely upon the Lord, right? God, not Mother Mary, not Jesus, not anybody. This is essentially Islam. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can make your stand against the devil's schemes. This is what we call seeking refuge within God in Islam. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, 
against the authorities, against the powers of this world's darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So depending on the translation, you either read authorities, but sometimes it says principalities as well. In the New King James Version, for example, it states, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So yet again, here you can clearly see how they took the original source from the Bible and changed it. Because here you see, grant me to pass unharmed through the principalities and powers of darkness. But who is there to grant this? In this case, allegedly, yet again, it is Mother Mary. So you're taking verses from the Bible where people addressed God directly, i.e. Islam, pure monotheism, and now you're taking those verses and you are addressing Mother Mary, the Theotokos. We proceed to Tuesday. Oh, my most holy mistress, the Theotokos, who art far more honorable than the angels and archangels cherubim and seraphim, and far more holy than all the saints, O oh, Virgin Mother of God. Okay, do I really need to say anything more about this? Here you can clearly see that she is apparently the most holy. And I talk to those people in person, face to face. They're not mentioning God as much as they're mentioning Mother Mary. For them, this is God. And this is what the Quran warned against. It proceeds, and this is absolutely hilarious, Save me, thy humble and sinful servant. Right? So let's stop here and acknowledge at least that this man proclaims to be again the servant of Mother Mary. However, then he proceeds, for thou knowest all merciful lady, yet again only God is all merciful, but well, that after God, <laughs> yeah sure, I place all my hopes in thee, and that I have no other refuge of salvation but thee. Arrest my case. So here you see how they're infusing monotheism. Hey, Virgin Mother Mary, Mother of God, actually, after God, yes, of course, I place all my hopes in thee. This is why I'm praying to you directly. This is why I worship thee. But hey, I'm just going to mention after God, of course, right? God comes first, but nevertheless, even though he comes first, I'm going to pray to everybody else but God. Why address him? Why simply speak to God, right? He probably has no time for me. I'm just going to pray to you, O Holy Virgin Mother of God. And after mentioning God, then he proceeds to say, and that I have no other refuge of salvation but thee. <laughs> How can that be, man? So I thought that she comes after God, right? That's what you just claimed. But now all of a sudden, the priest, the monk, whoever reads this, has no other refuge of salvation but Mother Mary. Make it make sense. Oh, all good one. So a creation of God is the all good one now. Thou art my strength, O mistress. Yet again, I could go through the Bible and show you that your strength should be only God, but well, who's counting at this point? Thou art my power, thou my rejoicing in sorrows, thou my haven in temptations, thou my correction in falls, thou also mine all hoped for salvation. O mother of my Lord and maker. So here you see how they always try to fit it somehow into monotheism, right? Oh yes, you are the mother of my Lord and maker, and I'm only praying to my Lord and maker. No, you're praying to his alleged mother. And this is why the Quran says that God neither begets nor is he begotten. He is the creator of all. Nobody created him. Help me who sail upon the depths of this life terribly besset and endangered by drowning in sin. Grant me a helping hand, my helper, and deliver me from the mire of the deep, that I not sink down into the abyss of despair. For the storm of sins and passions hath risen against me, and the waves of transgressions overwhelm me. But do thou, O compassionate mother, thou heaven of passionlessness, direct and save me, O hope of the hopelessness and mediatress of my salvation. Amen. All right, guys, I'm going to cut it off here because the video is way too long. It continues here, man. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and of course, Sunday. Those guys are praying 
to Mother Mary. They are worshipping her, venerating her as the mother of God. You saw it here clearly how they take quotes from the Bible and then they make it into a new prayer, which they then address towards the mother of God. Yet again, I cannot say that even back in the day when I was a Christian, I tried to understand it. I saw it as a mystery, but ultimately I saw it back then, even though I didn't know about the terminology as shirk taking partners besides God. And this is exactly what the Quran claimed. Yet again, let's end it with the quote from the Quran. Let's prove it once and for all. And beware the day when Allah, God, will say, O Jesus, son of Mary, which is factual, he was the son of Mary, did you say to the people, take me and my mother as deities besides Allah? He will say, exalted are you. It was not for me to say that to which I have no right. If I had said it, you would have known it. You know what is within myself, and I do not know what is within yourself. Indeed, it is you who is knower of the unseen. And this is exactly what Christians do. They are praying directly to Jesus, and they are praying directly to Mother Mary, and they are praying sometimes to the Father. However, nobody prays to the Holy Spirit. Have you ever noticed that? Nobody ever prays to the Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, please forgive my sins. This is not happening. So therefore, your Trinity, yes, allegedly, apparently, is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. However, the Quran doesn't speak about the Trinity. It simply speaks about you guys taking Mother Mary and Jesus as gods besides God. And this is what you do. You deify them. With Jesus Christ, quite literally, you admit that. But with Mother Mary, especially in the Orthodox and the Catholic Church, even more so, but you do not admit it. This is clear worship of a human being, of a woman. Please repent of your ways and return to the worship of God alone. All right, guys, this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And as always, may God, God alone, bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh